So as I was reading an article called The Consequences of No Physical Attraction, um, a lot of the points he brought up were very much the arguments I brought up myself. And this is somebody who's a relationship expert. Just goes to show you that you don't need to be an expert, quote unquote, in the, in the subject, uh, on the topic to pick up on these things. Number one, he said, poor sex life. Well, of course, if you're not really attracted to somebody, you're not really having meaningful, exciting, and fulfilling sex. Number two, affairs. Of course, you're looking for what you don't have. So, you know, the consequences of not being attracted um, remind me of the consequences of not truly having love because uh, these things aren't the same thing. Okay, love is more powerful than this and love comes with attraction, mind, body, and soul. So, you know, the poor sex life, the affairs, the nitpicking, number three. Number four, people become distant. Number five, lack of respect. I used to describe it as you don't treat women uh, with the same kind of love and, and you don't treat them well if you don't really, uh, if you aren't really attracted to them, uh, subconsciously, unconsciously, and otherwise. Um, the, and the lack of affection, again, you know, if you're not really madly in love with someone, they're going to tell and it's going to have, uh, you know, consequences on that person. So, you know, when we see these people starting to say, don't fat shame, don't slut shame, basically saying, you know, help us create the situation where people settle and um, don't try to encourage these people to be better is really what they're saying. You know, that when you really follow that train of thought to its finish. Okay, so what are you missing out on? You put your body in order in more than one way when you have uh, a meaningful relationship with a woman that you're in love with, that you're attracted to. Number eight, it helps you work on your timing and your energy, okay, uh, your energy, your spirit usage uh, relative to love making, right? When do I make love? Uh, how many times do I do it? Uh, how does it fit into my routine and my regiment? You know, is it going to wear me out? Is it going to energize me? Uh, what effects is it going to have? And so on. And also it helps you work on, um, you know, making it so that you have more endurance in bed, so to speak, if you know what I mean, uh, because the more you're attracted to somebody, the more likely you are to uh, end it quickly, we'll say, uh, if you're not careful. So, you know, people who are Minutemen, a lot of times it's a result of them not having these meaningful relationships and not uh, focusing on the love rather than uh, the physical attraction, which leads to um, erectile dysfunctions, we'll say, in various ways, okay? Uh, you know, at least being a Minuteman, okay, really. So the, the clever attractive escort problem comes into play, right? That goes back to the Minuteman. It goes back to the, the lack of a meaningful relationship. It leads to lack of respect and nitpicking. When you know you're with some kind of clever, conniving slut who just happens to be attractive, you know, on, on different levels, it is alarming and it has different uh, reactions. So that also affects your attraction, right? Your ability to respect this person, okay, is connected to the attraction. So Stephen J. Betchen in Psychology Today, the, psych the consequences of uh, no physical attraction, is also touching on this wittingly or otherwise, okay? Number 11. First comes justice, then love. So first there's survival, empathy, justice, then love. Those of us who transcend survival or, uh, or, or kind of shallow empathy, we, 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 we have advanced to justice and then love. And so you have to do them justice by being with somebody that you're really in love with. Okay, and when they see that you're moving and your behavior, your mentality uh, reflects this way of thinking, a lot of times they want to drug you for it because society is full of bitches who don't respect love or God. And we see this. You know, if I had to explain that to you, you haven't been paying attention. Okay, um, so passion also helps you with your shape, your physique, how you make love. Okay, helps you forge your body. Worship, war shape, right? Make love, not war. No, making love can be a form of war. But if you limit it to that, you're a dumb fuck. You're dumber than a liberal pushing the party line, thinking they know better than I do. Okay, or conservative for that matter. So we talk about ontology, the nature of being, the nature of reality. This hasn't been defined yet, so we have to go with the logical assumptions, right? I don't know for sure if I drive off that cliff, I'm going to die. You never know what's going to happen. But the logical assumption is it's a bad idea. I don't know if I'm going to die right now. now. The logical assumption is it's not going to happen, so I'm going to keep planning for my day, I'm going to keep making this video, whatever you're doing, okay? This is life. Nothing is guaranteed. You don't know anything for sure. And the closest way to uh, 
kind of understand reality is to focus intensely on reality and martial arts helps you do that mind, body, soul, and spirit. It's stupid not to see it that way. This is why martial arts is superior uh, to science when it comes to understanding reality. So when you look at, think about fighting, for example, when you're sitting down and you're thinking, hey, that guy looks big and strong. It has a different effect than when you're working out and you're walking around and you're thinking, hey, I could outmaneuver this guy, find my way in and stab him effectively and finish him off. Okay. And of course, they've been breaking down my body. If you don't know that, you're an idiot. If you think that somebody who is as smart and as intense as I am needs to lie about challenges and this, that, and the other thing, who's you know, had as, as good shape as I have, uh, I, I've had in the past, uh, needs to lie about these things, you're a fucking idiot. You know? Um, it's like saying the strongest man in the world needs to lie about, you know, being the strongest man in the world. You can kind of look at him and say, this guy's a big, strong guy. If he's not the strongest, he just needs to work out more. Why is he going to sit down and lie to you about it, you know, for fucking four years, right? You know, uh, my videos for uh, uh, eight or nine years, you know, since 2009, about nine years. Okay, nine, it'll be nine years next month uh, at the end of the month. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it's stupid not to understand that I'm the top martial artist. That I wouldn't lie to you about this for nine years. Wouldn't have a challenge for four years and one at one point offering a hundred thousand dollars and have four challengers accept, you know. Anyway, so when we look at it, um, we see going back to the shape, right? Is a fighting shape versus killing and war, okay? Uh, fighting, right? It's a play on words for fo in the G uh, is the seventh letter. It can be removed. The H is the fence. The T is the plus of the feminine suffix and the G. So five becomes fo fo in, right? Fighting. The idea matches. Killing, right? Kill, kill, L, K, Ka, L, okay, uh, and two L's, right? Two L's, spirit clashing, you know, killing, killing the spirit, killing the flesh, and so on. So the big bone fighter, right? He's the superior. That's why we have weight classes, right? The big bone guy tends to be the superior fighter, okay? The medium build boxer, you know, uh, after that, right? This kind of thick, athletic guy, you know, he sticks and moves and so on. And the thinner martial artist tends to be, you know, the superior. A warrior. When I seen this picture of a peregrine falcon diving, right, um, it was colored black and white. It reminded me of my argument about how the ideal warrior, the ideal martial artist is very much like an Egyptian, uh, like Narmer was depicted, like Egyptians are depicted. He's a mixed guy, and it created this certain shape that allows him to move quickly. He's not too thick, like a big, thick African. Uh, he's not too short and kind of athletic like, you know, some of these smaller black guys. He's mixed with something else that gives him this perfect mix between athletic uh, uh, ability, you know, kind of shape and body structure and the, the lightweight kind of body structure mixed in there to, you know, when it comes to bone density and otherwise, to strike quickly. And this certainly had a lot to do with um, why I set the record when it comes to the most strikes in about a second uh, when, when you factor in distance, okay? about Deontay Wilder's uh, a boxing range, the full extension of, uh, you know, the arm, okay, your wingspan, etc. So, w what else allowed me to do it? Well, mental, there was a mental component, right, brain structure for my parents, okay, genetic component, mental component, brain component, okay, brain structural component, uh, 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 determinant in regards to brain structure, intensity, response time, recovery time, natural cultivation, right, regeneration, uh, focus, strike, quickly plus effectiveness right the focus the ability to strike quickly and, and effectively you know surgical strikes brain surgeon fodder speed dexterity agility awareness consciousness and that will lead me back to the sensibility stuff i'll bring up at the end um, being sharp astute keen alert right there's this mental prowess uh, mental acuity that factors in accuracy acuity um, etc there are hidden elements right as one is able to detect the change in spirit and motion. Uh, automatic unconscious behaviors factor in, subconscious mental processes factor in, and certainly this is a part of brain structure and the spirit in which one we produce to get to this point naturally. The receptive component of the brain structure, and the brain and the mind. Okay, so when we see this, women, they've made serious mistakes in life. You know, when it comes to living your life, is traveling, living your life, is fake, you know, superficial attractiveness based on psychology living your life, or is true love living your life, right? So they've, they've in, in the name of living their lives, they have sacrificed love out of cowardice, shallow, shallowness, and, and, and a lack of wisdom. So power and happiness aren't the same. Submission to God is the only true way to have love and happiness. Uh, we look at the power they're looking for, right? It's an evil philosophy, 
you know, is what they end up having, which doesn't allow for love and truly living your life, or you'll be full of remorse and feeling guilty all the time and not truly living your life, or you're drugging it away and you're in a drugged up state not living your life. Remorse and Morse code, you know, the different ways you're communicating that you're not happy. And this is part of why someone like me probably should control reproduction from their own perspective if they follow their train of thought to its finish. I go as far as to say he should from their own perspective because he knows what's good for them. And these are the people who back up mental health and force medicate people and insist that people do it their way and take away people's freedoms, those freedom of speech, for example, and censor them on the internet because they say things they don't want people to hear. Uh, and they, they have recommended that people who um, talk in a way that uh, isn't good for feminism in college should be censored and textbooks and stuff should be censored if they're not pro-feminist. They've made these arguments before. So when you follow their own train of thought to their finish, what's actually best for women is not the feminist perspective. It is my pure masculine sun temple African perspective. I would actually allow them to live their lives and enjoy their lives and reach their true potential, their perspective. And the conservative one, to be fair, doesn't allow for that. So the desire to do something virtuous and great is superior to the desire to advance a nation, a gender, a race, or a corporate agenda, or anything less than that. Okay. Optimum performance, right? The form. Who is the master of the form? Well, I have taken form and have come into war shape to do what is right for everybody, what allows them to live their life. I have a superior form. That's also why the other martial artists can't beat me. And they haven't done anything comparable to what I have accomplished. The religious romantic love spirit plus the accompanying energy is superior to a sexual energy alone. If I have to elaborate on that, it's very unfortunate. Just think about why that is. I'll say it again for you. The religious, romantic, love-filled spirit plus the accompanying energy is superior to sexual energy alone. And this also goes back to the argument about power uh, versus happiness. Okay. To hone the awareness of the value of love, love's value, and through faith, works, repetition, performance, okay, application, is superior to faith alone. Love is a play on words for live, the O and the I, interchangeable vowels, vowel to L, the I, the perspective, right? How to live is in love. And what is the true definition of love? Well, who knows better than the martial arts hero? Some shallow conformist corporate shell? Certainly not. Some controlled opposition bitch? Certainly not. Some coward that didn't stand with me? Certainly not. Forged for God, right? Forged for God. Forged the soul in battle. Right? A receptionist, right? This proves my point when it comes to their own wordplay set testifying against himself, right? To receive the spirit. The receptionist, right? Secretary, secret airy, secret arrow, secretary, secret love. And what is the true meaning of love? Well, certainly the non martial artist Greeks don't understand. I do. We look at the nose, right? The nose changes when you make different expressions, right? That's why Horace is face, right? Set is the calm face. You know, when I communicate this to you calmly, and my expertise, it is not the same as if we were to spar and I outmaneuver you. And you say, hey, that's the only true way to measure a man or a human being's worth in relative to another is to do a mind, body, soul exercise. And sparring is the only logical way to do it. We can't compare forms of people who have different body shapes or even people who have the same body shape. It's subjective at best. It must be sparring the spirit, spar it. Okay? When it comes to killing, right? And even the bloodshed being taboo and offensive to God, right? Uh, Spart, light contact. Anyway, so I want to go back over sensibility, the ability to receive sensations, the peculiar susceptibility to a pleasurable or painful impression, the awareness of an of and responsiveness toward the awareness of and responsiveness toward something such as an emotion in another or the spirit, right? Sensibility, sensibility. The refined or excessive sensitiveness in emotion and taste with a special responsiveness to the pathetic. Believe me, people who don't have my uh, philosophy are pathetic. They're unevolved, if you will. They haven't evolved in the true spirit of love and God and the true spirit of naturally ordering something to marshal, to order. Sensible, archaic, perceptively large, considerable, 
right? The spirit, right? Why can't you sense it, right? Because what you're doing is not sensible. It's not a sensible way to uh, perceive the spirit. The receptive to external influences, sensitive, the most sensible reaches of the spirit is the example they use, emotionally aware and responsive. It is stupid not to see it my way. It is stupid not to understand what, how exhilarating experiences and sensibility are connected to love and living your life. Thank you.